Hey guys, a while ago I uploaded a video to YouTube comparing, I believe it was KDE to GNOME 2. Anyhow, I've received a lot of requests, some asking me to do an updated video comparing KDE to GNOME 3. So I am using OpenSUSE 12.2 in both of these virtual machines. One of them is running KDE 4.8.4, whereas the other one is running GNOME 3.4.2. Uh, both of these virtual machines are on you know, an 8 gigabyte virtual hard drive, which, you know, isn't a lot of space, that's so enough. They both have access to 4 gigabytes um, of RAM, and the system I'm using has an i7, so it should be powerful enough for this video. So anyhow, let's get stuck into it. I'm mainly going to be focusing on the cosmetic differences and the different applications. I'm going to be looking at this um, more from your typical user's point of view. Um, so first, let's take a look at the interface on KDE. We basically have the KDE menu here, which I will take a look at in a second. We have this um, button here. What do they call it again? They call it the Activity Manager. And it basically um, changes the type of desktop or activity, as they like to call it. You can change it to Search and Launch, which basically allows you to search your computer and launch different applications. You can change it to more of a traditional desktop icon only view. Uh, I believe the default is this desktop view where you basically have a folder inside of this widget here. Uh, we have a photos activity view. Obviously, I don't have any photos in this virtual machine. Um, and yeah, did they move it around a bit whilst I was looking about it? Though anyhow, those are the main views. I'm just going to keep it on the default desktop view. We have um, our desktop button here, desktop one, desktop two. Uh, we have a link to the Dolphin File Manager and a link to the Firefox web browser. Over here we have a notification to let us know that we have three available updates. Uh, this must be the clipboard tool, uh, yep, clipper. Uh, we have volume control, this looks to be the USB device control. Uh, and we have notifications and there's basically um, a desktop search um, file index going on now. We have um, the clock in the bottom right hand corner. When you click on that it brings up the calendar. And I believe this is if you want to edit the bar, it comes up with a few different options. Um, so that's basically what the taskbar looks like in KDE. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much what I said before, the default view with the widget, with the folder. Um, I, be I believe we have a few more options up here to change the panets and the widgets, etc. I won't really get into that. Um, in GNOME, it's um, fairly different. Um, I haven't used GNOME 3 a lot in the past, if I'm completely honest. We basically have activities in the top left-hand corner. We have um, the time, and yeah, we basically have the time in the middle here. I like how it pops out with the calendar here and all of your events on the right-hand side. Uh, what's this? I believe this is um, accessibility options, you know, relating to the zoom and contrast, etc. We have our volume control, and if you click on your name, you have a few different options here, like your availability, whether or not you want notifications, you know, a shortcut to system settings, to lock the screen, to log out, hibernate, power off, etc. Now let's compare the two menus to one another. Uh, we basically have the KDE menu, um, which, you know, has remained the same for quite a while. Uh, it basically tells you your name, username on computer name. You can search at the top there. We have all of our favorite applications here. We have all of our applications split into categories here. So, you know, um, I'm not going to bore you and go through all of them. Though, for example, you know, under internet, we have a subcategory web browser with the web browsers. I will compare the different applications in a minute. And to go back, you can just click back. Um, so we have applications, we have the computer tab with an administration section and the places section where, you know, all of your different folders on the system are. Removable storage devices so at the bottom here, all of your recently used documents appear here. And here is the leave option, you know, relating to your session if you want to log out, lock the computer, switch users, or to the system if you want to hibernate it, restart it, shut it down, etc. So that's basically what the menu looks like in KDE. Um, I haven't have had a lot of experience with the menu in GNOME 3. Though from what I can tell, you basically have um, 
all of your favourite pinned apps to the left hand side, I could be wrong. And Windows um, is where all of your current you know, applications are stored. And then you have the application tab. Um, here are all of the applications and you have all of the different categories here. If you don't want to you know, see all of them, you can split them up by categories. Um, and I believe that there used to be some filter options or maybe not in, anymore, there used to be um, options to filter them even further than the category that I can't see them now, so maybe they got rid of them. You can obviously search the menu for different applications, etc. Now let's compare the default applications. Uh, let's start off by comparing the web browsers. OpenSUSE um, comes with, or OpenSUSE and KDE comes with two web browsers, it comes with Firefox and Conqueror. I believe that Conqueror usually you know, comes with most um, KDE distributions. Um, I quite like Conqueror because it is both a web browser and a file manager in one. So we have Conqueror and you know, of course we have Firefox. Uh, I haven't used Firefox in a while, I use Google Chrome or Chromium, so Firefox version 14.0.1. And what's the default in GNOME? We have Firefox here as well by the looks of it. And do we have any other web browsers? Uh, no, it looks like um, OpenSUSE with GNOME 3 only comes with Firefox. And I presume that's the same version. Uh, yep, that's the same version. Um, and it's interesting, window behavior is a bit different in both of these distributions too, or both of these desktop environments, I should say. Um, in KDE, it's a bit like Windows, you minimize and maximize. Whereas it seems to um, work differently in GNOME 3. Um, I, ha I don't have a lot of experience with it, though it basically appears at the top here. And by clicking on the application, you only have the option to quit it. And um, by opening a different application, it basically changes the um, you know, logo at the top here to that application. So I haven't had a lot of experience with GNOME 3, though it's interesting how it works. Um, I'm not sure how everyone uses GNOME 3, though when I use GNOME 3, I um, just use Alt-Tab to switch between applications, as you would, you know, on Windows. That seems to, um, you know, work in GNOME 3 as well. And then obviously if you go to Activities, um, you have the window view here. And if you also click on the Windows key, it also um, you know, opens up this window for you straight away too. And to close an application, you apparently either click on it and click on Quit, or you can close it down in um, you know, this sort of Windows menu. So, you know, GNOME 3 looks to be pretty functional too, though it looks like it relies a bit more on keyboard shortcuts than um, you know, KDE does, or that's just my opinion. So those are the web browsers that they both come with. Let's take a look at the media players. Um, KDE on OpenSUSE comes with Amarok, which is a pretty popular media player. And it comes with a few different um, audio applications as well. So let's open up Amarok. And it looks like um, they have Amazon um, MP3 store integration with Amarok. I'm not sure whether or not that's always been there. Um, and I am in Australia. There is no option for Australia, so it must only be available in the United Kingdom or the United States. And, you know, they're asking, you know, whether or not you want to install MP3 support. I'm just going to skip that for now. Obviously, you will want to. Uh, yeah, you can use that path. I don't mind Amarok. So out of the box, it doesn't look great, so you can drag and drop things around and arrange them, you know, make it look how you want it to look, etc. So the default uh, multimedia application in KDE is Amarok. There is another one that I quite like, um, it is the video player Caffeine. Um, uh, no, I'm not going to install the additional codecs yet. But I quite like um, Caffeine and also in KDE, as you can see, the windows are transparent when you drag them over one another. I used to use Caffeine with um, a digital TV tuner I had in my old computer, so I quite like the Caffeine application. I believe that we have um, Banshee um, in GNOME 3 on OpenSUSE. So is there, yeah, the sound and video. So we have Banshee, that's just a disc burner, and we have some sort of movie player. Um, I personally prefer the appearance of Banshee. Um, 
you know, you sort of have um, all of the different categories on the left hand side, now playing, you can have your cue, music, audio books, videos, podcasts, um, you know, your online radio stations, etc. And you have Amazon MP3 and a few different services here. So I personally prefer the default media player in GNOME 3 compared to the default run in KDE. Though know, you can obviously use whatever media player you want to really. Uh, so what other applications can we compare with? We've compared a few internet applications, multimedia, Office. They probably both have the same Office programs being LibreOffice. Um, well, I also quite like um, the K address book, K organizer, I think it is. They have a few different programs built into it. This is only available on KDE, I believe, or by default, anyhow. Um, K organizer, oh, this is the calendar for K organizer. I believe there's a program which you can open which links them all together from memory. Uh, where is it? Uh, I will find it in a minute though, yeah that's part, the address book is part of K-Organizer um, and we obviously have with the Libra Office um, programs, it's basically the free version of you know Microsoft Office, we have Database, Flowchart, uh, or maybe this is what it was called, Contact, oh yeah this is what it used to be called, Contact, I quite like this application because you can access your emails, your contacts, calendar, to-do list, RSS feeds, you can have your own journal and pop-up notes. I really like this um, KDE application. Okay, now let's go back into Office. So LibreOffice, I believe that's a link to the you know general program. We have spreadsheet, presentation, and writer. So if I just click on LibreOffice, it should come up with you know a window asking what type of document I want to create, etc. Whether I want a text document, spreadsheet, presentation, drawing, database, formula, etc. So that's basically LibreOffice, um, and I presume that GNOME 3 probably also comes with LibreOffice. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, yeah, it looks like GNOME 3 also comes with LibreOffice. It will look identical, really. Yeah. Uh, so that's the Office applications, and yeah, what else can I show you? Graphics, they probably both come with GIMP and all of that. Um, so in KDE, yep, we have GIMP. For photography, let's see what we have here. Um, I can't remember whether KDE used to come with Shotwell or something else. So we have a few different programs here where I haven't heard of any of these. I think it's changed um, since the last time I used um, OpenSUSE. I haven't used it in a while. Um, and let's take a look at the default um, graphics applications um, in GNOME 3. Uh, we have Cheese, which is basically a webcam application. That's pretty good. We have GIMP. We have Inkscape, oh yeah, Shotwell must be in um, GNOME, not KDE, Simple Scan, Image Viewer. Um, so yeah, those are all of the basic applications really. I'm not sure if there are any other applications I can really show you. Let's open my computer in KDE. It has a lot of helpful information like your common folders, your disk information. This is in a virtual machine, so it's all pretty low. Uh, you know, your CPU information, your OS information, as you can see it's KDE 4.8.4 um, we have memory information, display information, battery information, you know, if you're on a laptop, etc. Um, and how do we bring this up in um, GNOME 3? I believe it's under System Tools and I'm pretty sure it's GNOME System from memory Ah uh, yeah, and under uh, oh, yeah, and under system monitor, we basically have the computer name, you know, the release, you know, twelve point two Mantis. Both of the virtual machines have the thirty two bit version running right now. GNOME three point four point two, the memory, the processor, etc. And this is just a bit like task manager really, the rest of this. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm not sure if, if I've forgotten something. I probably have. Um, though they are both um, good distributions, I personally um, prefer KDE. Um, you know, GNOME isn't bad. Um, I think it's a bit more reliant on keyboard shortcuts than KDE. 
Um, oh yeah, there was one other thing I wanted to show you, um, which is um, you asked the control panel. You need to enter your root password to open it up. Um, you know, I believe that Yast is um, exclusive to OpenSUSE or it might be in a few other distributions. It's not in many, that's for sure. Um, let's see, I believe that GNOME has it too. I really like um, the control panel. It looks a bit different in um, GNOME and KDE. Though I quite like um, this control panel. Um, I quite like how it's set up and there are a few different advanced, you know, controls. I can't remember them off the top of my head, though you used to be able to use a few um, different um, shortcuts to open up, um, you know, multiple desktop environments under different hotkeys like F1, F2, F3, etc. And you used to be able to skip between them. That was a feature I really used to like. I believe that's in one of my previous videos. Um, but yeah, that's um, pretty much it for this video. Um, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask me. If you download the DVD image of OpenSUSE, then it includes both the GNOME and the KDE um, desktop environment. So you can try both of them out really and decide which one is um, best for you. And you can obviously try both of these desktop environments um, you know, in a different distribution. You don't have to use OpenSUSE though. I recommend it. I'm you know, a pretty big fan of it. Um, but yeah, that's um, pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. Do you prefer KDE, the KDE desktop environment or the GNOME desktop environment? I know that a lot of people got turned off GNOME um, when they, you know, went, you know, went ahead with GNOME 3. A lot of people, you know, preferred GNOME 2. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Click the like button if you liked um, this video. Subscribe to watch all of my um, future videos. And thanks for watching.